Grace to you and peace from God, your Father, from the Lord Jesus Christ, his Son, your Savior, and the Holy Spirit, who delivers to us good cheer indeed by declaring our sins forgiven, declaring the power for us to arise and walk with God forever. Amen. Son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. One of the best memories I have of Vacation Bible School came some 24 years ago now. We did vacation Bible school that year in a large army tent outdoors. Three different groups of children divided by age, all hearing the same lesson, which included this one, which I delivered all three times while lying on a cot on the ground. to depict this poor, paralyzed man. But even more, the power of Jesus' words. Son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. And I rejoiced. And then in the story when Jesus later says, Arise. Take up your bed and go to your house. I did. What was all the more remarkable was that third group of children, the oldest ones, in about fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. After we completed the lesson and while we we're still milling about inside the tent, waiting a few minutes until we are to go and lead this group to their next activity. All of a sudden, I could see three or four pairs of children doing the exact same thing. Of each pair, one lying on the ground, flat as a board. And the other one saying, be of good cheer, your sins are forgiven you. And they got up. They grasped the lesson that Jesus is teaching. Because what he does with this man is not address his physical concern first, but the real problem that he had. The sin that separates man from God. That's why there is good cheer in those words of Jesus. Your sins are forgiven you. Such power exists in those words. For as Jesus says, which is easier for a human being to say, your sins are forgiven you, Or for a human being to say, rise and walk. There's no such power in human words. But in God's word. Be of good cheer. Creates the cheer that arises from the assurance of the forgiveness of all sins. All of them. Every single last one of them. Your conscience need not be bothered. You need not fear. You are to be of good cheer. When you hear those words of Jesus and believe them, 
Those words have power. And those words have been given to God's church. It's the first aspect that St. Matthew indicates to us as he writes this inspired word to us. As we hear how the people marveled and glorified God who had given such power to men. Matthew writes of this well after this episode. After Jesus has given to his apostles this ministry of the church, these words that men speak to believing men and women and children to convey the power that is in and with those words. I forgive you all your sins. They're not human words. They're the words of Jesus. And those words of power, forgive sin now. In this time, in our lives. So that we might truly arise through those words and walk in them. This is not merely a miracle for this paralyzed man, although a miracle indeed it is. It's what happens again in this space tonight for us. As Jesus comes to visit us through his word and his sacraments, to speak that same word at the very beginning of the service. Your sins are forgiven you. And that brings us good cheer indeed. He speaks these words because he sees your faith. Just as he saw the faith of those men who bring this man before him. And the man himself who lays himself before Jesus through his friends as to say, I have no other hope but in you, my Lord. But with the forgiveness of sins also comes this restoration to life. Arise and walk are also the words spoken to us this night. That we are lifted up to new life, just as holy baptism declares to us. The old man is drowned. The new man comes rising to the top of those holy waters. And then we are sent out to walk with Jesus all our lives. While we struggle against the flesh that wants to bring us back to those old habits, our old ways. The ways that would otherwise paralyze us spiritually. The power of baptism as we draw upon it daily, allows us to drown the old Adam again and bring the new man in Christ again to live according to his holy commandments. In all of our walking in this world, in this life, it is all informed by his word about how we ought to relate to our neighbors, how we ought to engage the world with our words, with our deeds, with our very lives, devoted to this one who has performed this double miracle in us. He has blotted out 
Like a thick cloud, our transgressions and our sins. The prophet Isaiah declares to us this night. And it's in that new way we live. And rejoicing all the way. In the midst of all of the troubles and trials of life. There's great cause for rejoicing. Even as the scriptures declare that we ought rejoice in our sufferings. Yes, rejoice because in doing so we exercise faith and strengthen it. Like when a muscle is exerted in strenuous labor. It's built up. It's strengthened. So also faith. This is the walk of faith. It's not an easy road. It's not one that everyone will take. We hear how some accuse Jesus of blasphemy. For making such a claim that he has the power on earth to forgive sins. They don't see Jesus for who he is, but you do. You know that he is here and is inviting you to his table of grace on this night to be restored in this holy communion with him, to be renewed in your life, joined to him. This is how we arise and walk, walk with him. He will continue to guide you. He will continue to guard you. He will continue to defend you by his word, by his spirit. And he gives us the vision of faith to see just like that paralyzed man, though it might look hopeless, Humanly speaking, with God, all things are possible indeed. Be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. Arise and walk with him into heavenly glory with him. Amen. Peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.